Hey everybody, this video is going to give you a quick preview of the things that you can do in Foundry from a player's perspective. The idea here is I just wanted in five minutes or so to give you a quick preview if you're getting ready to play a Foundry game. Just a quick way to look at uh, the game and see what you're able to do. So uh, what we see in front of us right now is the basic Foundry interface. And uh, we've got uh, Thomas here, as we'll kind of use Thomas as our, our uh, token. And uh, we'll, just to show you now, if we want to add a status effect to Thomas, like a stymied effect, we can right click on the token and then go to assign status effects here. And we can see just a number of different uh, status effects that can be assigned, including vulnerable, very vulnerable, and uh, stymied effects. And there are tooltips that'll show up for each one of these. So I'm going to add a stymied effect to Thomas here by left clicking on it. And then you can see the, the effect reflected uh, in an icon that's up on the token there. Now, to open the character sheet for Thomas, all we need to do is double click on his uh, token. We can also get it from the Actors tab, but the quickest way is usually to double click on the token. And then from inside we can make, you can see uh, some attribute skill roles here and we can make skill roles down on this level. So just quickly we'll make a find roll just to show you what that looks like. It rolls the dice for us and then we get a result there that tells us the action total for the die roll. Now this doesn't take any modifiers into effect when it's done this way. So you have to calculate those modifiers manually. However, it is possible to do something called an enhanced skill roll where you do add difficulty numbers and modifiers. And to do that, you need to hold down the shift key and then press the skill. We'll do a reality check this time. And when I, I'm holding down the shift key now and when I press the reality skill, you can see now I get a dialog box that asks me for a difficulty number and then gives me a number of different modifiers that I can put in. And you'll notice down at the bottom of the dialog box, it actually reflects the stymied effect that we added to the token just a minute ago. So rolling this at difficulty number 10, we can see here that we get a failure result and we get difficulty number, the action total, and basically all the data you need to have about the test right up here. If you want to change some of the modifiers, it's possible to click on the word modifiers here. That'll bring your dialog box back up. You can change the DN and any number of other things, and it'll give you a new result as a res uh, after you uh, click on the update button down at the bottom. So <clears throat> also after you've made your test, if you want to spend a possibility on your check, you can click on the possibility button. The system will roll and you'll get uh, the updated result in chat from that role. You can also use an up result, a hero card, a drama card, or a plus three card to alter the outcome in the chat. Then uh, if we look over now into the right column on the character sheet, you'll see you have some options for interaction attacks. Now to do these interaction attacks, you need to have a target selected. So I'm going to just click on the werewolf here and then click on the target button on that werewolf. So now I've got the werewolf targeted. And then if I do an intimidation attack on that, you'll get the, the dialog box and then you click on that. And then we get a result for the intimidation attack, in this case, a failure. Then it's also possible to do uh, melee weapon attacks. Uh, I generally recommend that you go ahead and target and then shift click uh, on the attack roll button to do the melee weapon attack over on the right side. It is important, by the way, to use the attack uh, side of the, the attacks column in the character sheet as opposed to the skills column when you're making an attack because that way you're going to get all of the enhanced effects and damage options. So I just shift clicked on the um, the skill test here to do a, a melee test. You can see we've got the difficulty set automatically by the target's unarmed combat. We have any number of different modifiers that we can add to the check if we want to. Still showing that he's stymied. We hit the roll button and we get an attack. This one's a failure, so I'm just going to add a couple of plus three cards onto it until we get 
a success now. And we can see we don't have enough, da enough base damage to damage it, but we can click the BD button down in the chat and that's going to roll some additional bonus die. And now we've got enough uh, damage done by the roll to do one shock. So to roll a BD, all you got to do is click on this uh, BD button that's down in the chat. So let's shift over now and talk about card play. To open your hand of cards, you're going to click on this button on your character sheet that says open hand, and then that's going to show you uh, what cards are available to the character at the time. To draw a destiny card, you click on the draw destiny button, and it'll automatically pull a destiny card in for you. To draw a cosm card, you click on the cosm button. If you want to read the contents of a particular card, just hover your mouse over the card and you'll get a nice big version of that card for you. To put a card into your pool during combat, just click on the in pool uh, column and that will add it to the pool. If you want to show the other players at the table a copy of your card, there is a broadcast card button there that will display the card so that everybody at the table can see it. To play the card, you click on the play button beside the card. That will automatically discard the card for you and notify everybody in chat that the card has been played. If you want to see what card has been played by yourself or another player, you can hover over the card in, in the chat and you'll get a nice big pop out that shows you uh, what the contents of that card are. You can also discard the card by clicking on the discard button on the far right and that will just move it over into the discard pile for you. In this case, I just discarded the Seize Initiative card. Then, um, finally, a little bit about combat. Uh, Torg Eternity uh, has a combat tracker, customized combat tracker, that is under the combat tracker tab. And if you click on that, what you'll see is something like this, which is going to show you up at the top the currently effective uh, drama card, and then it's going to show you all of the participants that are in the combat down below that. If a player has a card that has been placed in their pool during combat, you'll be able to hover over that card and again get a preview of what the contents of that card are right there. And one other thing you may want to do in the course of your game is pop out either the combat tracker or the chat or both so that you can see both of them at the same time. Uh, to pop out either one of those, all you got to do is right click on it. That gives you a nice clean pop out that you can move around the screen and put anywhere you want. But I highly recommend that you keep the combat tracker open while you're playing. So those are the basics of the game. Your GM is probably familiar with the system and can help remind you about what some of these are. But hopefully that'll be enough to uh, help you get started in your fight against the High Lords. So good luck.